Good afternoon. In this video, I'm going to deal with the issue of uh, dispensationalism and following Paul as our apostle. Uh, this really pertains to the last video I did with Mark Hunter and his video talking about his repentance or work. Now, of course, what Mark does is subtly uh, removes what he means by repentance, and uh, he has just repentance there. What he means is repentance of sins. That's what he means. He doesn't want to really say it. Uh, because repentance of sins doesn't show up anywhere as a requirement for salvation. Now, repentance uh, basically can be, uh, is, is inseparable from salvation. You must uh, repent, uh, which is a change of mind in order uh, to believe the gospel. So they're inseparable, but they can be distinguished, and they are uh, distinguished sometimes in the scriptures and uh, uh, separated as such as dis being distinguished uh, from one from the other. But I'll deal with that in more detail as when I deal with uh, Acts 26 and his claim uh, about Paul and uh, that issue there, uh, his testimony. And uh, but I'm going to look at the issue of uh, his attack on dispensationalism and his rejection of the Pauline uh, uh, viewpoint that uh, we follow Paul for our doctrines and uh, our gospel. And, uh, that, and, and he goes to 1 uh, Corinthians and... Uh, this is, uh, he goes into uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, 11. Uh, For it hath been declared unto me, uh, unto me uh, of you, uh, my brethren, by them which are in the house of Chloe, Chloe, that there are contentions among you. The Corinthians were in a carnal state, so there's a lot of bickering and battling going on. This, by the way, contradicts the idea of a changed life viewpoint of uh, Denglinger, because uh, Corneth, was not a church that was showing any changed life. It was showing nothing but sin and sin problems. Now this I say that every one of you saith, I am of Paul and I have Apollos and I have uh, Cephas and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul? So they either use this to say if you say you've, you know, you're Pauline and you're following Paul the Apostle that you're following this type of thing. I'm of Paul and, and, and this type of division. This is a personality issue here and these guys were following uh, ministers basically on that personality and, and claiming uh, that uh, and bragging about uh, each one of these guys. That doesn't mean that though Paul was saying he was denying that you're supposed to follow him in his doctrine for this dispensation. Uh, and uh, 1 Corinthians 3, he talks about Apollos and, and uh, 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 Apollos uh, in 3 4. He says here, uh, While one saith, I am of Paul, another, I am of Apollos, ye are, are ye not carnal. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believe even as the Lord gave to every man? And so he was just pointing out that uh, the issue was that uh, they, were, they were raising these guys up uh, in personality. Like we see that today in a lot of churches. That these guys get raised up uh, to per, in, in, uh, personality cults. And that's what he was addressing. Not the issue uh, of following him doctrinally. Uh, and that's what these guys have to deny. First uh, Corinthians 4.16 uh, we're told here, I have begotten you, uh, let me see, verse 15, therefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. That's Paul talking there. That's the Holy Spirit telling, telling us to follow Paul. And the 1 Corinthians 11, 1, 1 Corinthians 11, 1, um, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. There's a second time the Holy Spirit tells us to follow Paul. Then we go to uh, Philippians 3.17. Philippians 3.17. Uh, let's see here. 3.17. 3.17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye have us have us as an example. In sample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now I tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. When you go against the Pauline doctrines, you become an enemy of the cross of Christ. When you start running to other books and the Gospels for your Gospel instead of the Paul, Paul's Gospel, you become an enemy of the cross of Christ. Now, I didn't say you can't read the Gospels. Some guy was in there saying, uh, I'm telling, he quoted, mis misstated what I said out of context. You don't, we don't go to Matthew, Mark, and Luke for our Gospel of salvation. We go there to read about the life of Christ and learn many things about Christ in those Gospels. But we don't get our Gospel from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. 
Um, for many walk more, I've often told, I've told you often, uh, verse 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Okay? So basically what he's saying, Paul is saying here is that uh, there's a group that are going to reject Paul, and uh, they're going to go off on their own way. And they're going to uh, be teaching another gospel and uh, another Christ, and they're going to be uh, preaching uh, uh, falsehoods because Paul is our apostle. And we're told twice in the same book, Corinthians, that we're told that, 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 that uh, uh, Mark Hunter is saying, uh, see, you can't, you can't follow Paul, you only have to uh, you know, follow Christ. When you follow Paul, you are following Christ. And that's why Paul twice in that, first, that very book in 1 Corinthians is telling us, follow him. Follow him. What was going on in 1 Corinthians when he talked about it was a, was a personality cult going on. And people were, rise, uh, were, raised, uh, were claiming to be of Paul and of, of Peter uh, and of Paulos based on, their, on their, uh, trying to brag about who they were following uh, based on their personalities. But doctrinally speaking, Paul makes, makes it very clear who you're supposed to follow uh, is Paul. And, and Peter points back in 2 Peter uh, 3 that to point back, points back to Paul about the hard doctrines. Some of the doctrines are hard to understand. He points back to Paul. So there's no question. Now again, it doesn't mean you re reject the other scriptures or ignore the other scriptures, but you place them within the concept, context of what Paul is teaching us today as the church. That is what must be always kept in mind. That is how we understand the other scriptures in light of what Paul has taught. So, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, is, uh, is not denying dispensational truth and dealing with Paul and following Paul as our apostle. All it's talking about is a particular issue that the, the Church of Corinth was going through. Uh, the, the two other places in, the, in that very same book tells us to follow Paul as he follows Christ. Christ was speaking through Paul to us as the, uh, the Gentiles coming into the church. That's who tells us how to live as, as uh, in the church and following church doctrines. That's how we get saved. It's Paul's gospel by which we get saved. And that's why we start uh, reading with Romans uh, 1 through 4 is the, uh, uh, the gospel. We find the gospel and then 5 through uh, 8 is how we walk. And that sums up the two areas right there in the beginning of your, your understanding of how to grow in grace and how to get saved. Now, the fact is, is that when these guys want to get off and, and, and run all over, all over the scriptures and not get rooted and grounded in Paul, that's what you get. You get guys who are all over the place, and you can never pin them down exactly what they mean because they've rejected the apostle that we're supposed to follow, Paul. And that, and 1 Corinthians 1, uh, the, uh, the first, in 1 first, first Corinthians 1, the first chapter, is not a uh, refutation of that fact because two other places in that same book, Paul tells us to follow him as he follows Christ. Amen. Thank you.